welcome to Colchester Do. My name is Laura, I'm the head of the primate section here and I'm going to be telling you a bit about our lovely ringtail lemurs and also our red bay lemurs here at the lemur walkthrough. We're also going to get to see us doing some weighing later on as well. So first of all I'll tell you a bit about who we've got here, a bit about the lemurs and then later on you'll be able to see us doing some weighing afterwards. Um, so in here we've got a troop of 11 ringtail lemurs. Now they are um, all males and they've actually all been born here at Colchester Zoo. So if you come to the zoo before you would have seen the rest of the breeding family group as you go on the train. So any lemurs which are born into that troop, any males will then get moved over here and join the bachelor group. And then you'll get the chance to see them when you come round on the train and begin. Madagascar from obviously the very famous film uh, but Madagascar is a very large island it's the fourth largest island in the world and it's the only place which you can find lemurs living in the wild and there are actually around oh what, over 100 species of lemurs living out there in Madagascar and they're all, all very unique Thank you to a few of our lemurs which we have here in the lemur walkthrough um, so we have got 11 lemurs in here all together ringtail lemurs that is and they are so the bachelor group so our dominant male is actually currently down here so this is a farka so a farka um, is the dominant male and his job is basically to keep all the other lemurs in check and make sure that they're behaving themselves. As a dominant male he does get to have first pick of all the food um, and the way the males will assert their dominance is by doing some scent marking and finger biting. So the way that they do that is by using some specially um, adapted scent glands on the inside of their wrists. So on the inside of their arms you see a little black uh, scent gland and there's also a hard sort of spur on there as well. The way that they scent mark is to push that spur into any branches and then they will be able to put their scent onto the branch and then scent marks them up their territory out there in the wild and here at the zoo as well. And when they do their stink biting, which is a way which they will fight uh, and assert their dominance within the troop, is by putting their tail in between those scent glands, rubbing their scent glands on their tail, popping the tail up above their head and then basically wafting it um, towards the other male lemur and sort of spreading their scent towards them. And that's the way that they would have their stink bites in the wild. And we do see them demonstrate that a lot here at the zoo as well. Now with the lemurs, they are incredibly social animals. They do love to sunbathe and they do also love to groom each other. And the way they groom each other is by using their teeth. So they have specially adapted teeth called a tooth comb, which is the lower incisors, which they use to brush through the fur and clean out their hair. And they also have a specially adapted uh, claw on their back feet called their grooming claw which is what they'll use then scratch through and then mark their fur and sort of clean their fur. So they'll sit in the bottom just like a dog or a cat, they'll lift that perhaps hind leg up and then scratch through their hair uh, to clean themselves. Uh, so we're now going to have a go at weighing some of our lemurs. I've been joined by Hannah, uh, one of our senior keepers, and she's going to be doing the weighing while I just tell you a bit about what we're doing and why we're doing it. So you can see we've basically got some scales set up over there on the rock area. And we're just doing a bit of luring just to try and tempt them onto the scales. So what we're using today is some leaf eater pellets. So in the wild, lemurs living in Madagascar are eating lots of fresh leaves throughout the day. We can't always get as many leaves as we'd like. Uh, obviously the enclosure here is full of bamboo, which they will eat, um, but we would like to give them some more. So instead we can give them this dry pellet feed, which is a complete diet for them and provides them everything they need. And they've also got some fresh vegetables to eat as well. So do get the purely vegetable based diets and that's just because the, the fruit which they're eating in the wild is going to look different to the fruit which we can get here uh, in, in the UK. So instead they've got some vegetables here today, they've got some pepper, uh, some pars parsnip and some celeriac. As I said they're using the dried pellet feed to actually weigh them today. So we've got Julian to make his way onto the scales now. So we, we do try to weigh the lemurs around every once a month. And that's just to give us an idea of what their weight is, if they're increasing any weight, if you need to adjust their food, if they're losing any weight. We do generally find that lemurs will have seasonal variation as well with their weights. So we do actually generally find that their weight actually dips a little bit around the breeding season, so around December to March, and then increases again after that. So you can see them just happily kind of popping on and off there just to get some weights with them. Now while Junior's on there as well, and you get a nice good look at him, so you see he's got a lovely black and white tail on, and so you see Hannah just gently sort of edging the tail onto the scales, just to ensure we get a full weight, including their tail, uh, rather than just their weight of their body. Now unfortunately lemurs in the wild are all threatened by a number of different things. Uh, there are some natural threats to them in the wild, so they do have a few predators. Uh, there are the fossas or the fusa, which you may know them as, as a natural predator for them in the wild. And you've also got large birds of prey as well. So often when you see the lemurs foraging around, they will be looking up to the sky, uh, checking for any predators. Unfortunately, predators aren't the biggest threat to lemurs in the wild now. The big 
biggest threats to them, unfortunately, are man-made problems. Uh, one of those being slash and burn agriculture, so chopping down the forest areas, burning the land to make room for agricultural land. Uh, the other big threat for them is also being hunted for their meat as part of the illegal bushmeat trade. And then finally, also the pet trade is also a big threat for them in the wild. Well, I hope you all really enjoyed watching our lemurs get way today and also learned a bit more about them as well. We'd like to say a massive thank you from all of the keepers here and all the rest of the staff for all your donations so far. It really is much appreciated and it is a massive help. We also want to say a big, big thank you to all our frontline NHS workers who are doing an amazing job of keeping us all safe and also fighting this pandemic. If you do want to keep in touch and watch what's going on, we are going to be posting more videos for you to all to watch and be bringing the zoo to you as much as we can. But for now, stay at home, stay safe and protect our NHS.